What the hell are we human beings? How did we come to be? Above all else, what's our purpose? The fact remains that when we think deeply to the beginning of our existence, there must have been intervention, and this is where God comes in. The first being who created human beings, but who created God and so forth. The beginning of perception, which sparked intelligent thought, it happened before the cataclysmic Squatterman event and happened again after, according to historic perceptions. But how much is truth and how much is lies to keep the people in check? When we attend mass, we gather. Our grouping becomes massive and a priest or speaker for God tells us the holy truth, tells us about God and the beginning of time, the life of prophets, of the Messiah, of events that certainly happened. But who are we to ever question the word of the Lord? Wait, do you hear this? So vivid was the great father's celestial image, and so overpowering was his influence on civilization in its infancy, that the ancient chroniclers often gave him human form, recalling him as the first man. But he was no mortal of flesh and blood. In his original character, he upheld the cosmos as the heaven man, a celestial giant whose body encompassed all the gods and composed the primeval matter of creation. The great father reigned over the prosperous age and then departed in great upheavals. The mythical accounts give this imposing figure such tangible and human traits that more than one scholar reduces him to a living man. An esteemed tribal ancestor whose heroic exploits succeeding generations progressively enlarged until the entire universe came under his authority. This is the approach of William Ridgway, who, in a survey of the best-known figures of the Great Father, argues that only an actual tribal chief could have left such a profound imprint on primitive communities. Ridgway asked us whether the abstract sky or the solar orb or a vegetation spirit, common explanations of the Great Father, could produce such devotion as is evident in the annual lamentations over the ruler's catastrophic death. Osiris, Brahma, Tammuz, Quetzalcoatl, their devotees remember each as a living ancestor whose passing was a terrifying calamity. Of course, Ridgway does not assume that one man alone accounts for all the traditions of a great father. Rather, he seeks to identify each in terms of a historical figure quite distinct from the venerated ancestors of other tribes. If his arguments against prevailing astronomical and vegetation theories carry great weight, they fail to explain the global parallel between the respected myths. Nor can one reconcile Ridgway's interpretation with the incontrovertible fact that in the earliest accounts, the Great Father is manifestly cosmic. That many sacred histories, however, present the creator, king, and human form is a paradox requiring an explanation. The solution lies in the nature of the legendary first man. But what do you guys think about the idea of a first man? person. Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.